I mean, it's like I'm watching a special ed version of Jerry Springer. I've seen more entertaining fights at my middle school recess than whatever this little tantrum was. Somehow that punch Jack threw did more of an impact on him than Neon himself. I could almost feel the testosterone leave my body as soon as I watched that punch. I mean, this right here is more proof on why there should be a lifeguard at the gene pool, because how did Flat Stanley fighting Milhouse from The Simpsons if he went through chemotherapy entertaining content that Kick promotes? Like, imagine these two crayon-crunching, flat-footed twin pair of pants on head tards be the face of your streaming company. Yeah, if I was the CEO, I would live stream myself jumping off a cliff with a grocery bag as a parachute. All right, welcome back, ladies and ladies with dicks. The last time we talked about America's favorite humble hero, Jack Doherty, we spoke about how he went from Jack Doherty to Jack Diddy, getting tossed insane allegations of himself, basically pre-ordering his own hose, inviting a bunch of underage girls to a party or his yacht, supplying them with alcohol until they get blackout drunk, then manipulate them into signing a contract for them to join his OnlyFans empire empire the moment they turn 18. Now, the thing that makes this slightly convincing is the fact of there being clips of Jack already interacting with drunk girls on stream in the past where he was one step away from getting pepper sprayed, being a total creep, shoving the camera in the faces of two girls that were begging him to leave them alone. Stop! Look, Ayo, really watch, stop. this is what they're saying about you. Oh my god, that's so cute. Stop. Stop. Look, watch. I don't care what they're saying. Why are you live streaming this? You're not asshole. Am I? Yes, you're you're nice. you want water? How are you? Yeah, are you 19? Go away. I'm 20. You're you not old. Yeah, I'm giving her my water. Why are you taking for the video? Why are you taking for the video? You're right. I'm always taking for the video. I just want to look good now after that. No, I'm kidding. Fuck you, that one girl was swimming with the mermaid, swaying side to side like a damn sailboat, and you're asking them to read what the toddlers are typing out in your chat? Then after they start to get slightly upset for you being there after they asked you a hundred times to leave, your instant reaction is to start to insult them and get defensive. So it definitely wouldn't be a surprise if these accusations turned out to be true, but of course Jack would be very quick to deny it, calling it all a honky hunk of bullshit that was only created in order to damage his golden reputation. Younger than basically every girl I have signed except for like one, and that girl signed four months after her 18th birthday so i have proof to back everything up if i need to but it's just so dumb that people really like believe that type of shit and they want to believe it because they hate me and they just can't accept the fact that i'm doing well in life every person that's currently in your life is only there because you pay them to be nobody is envious of the fabricated lifestyle you have jack you're only surrounded by women so they can take photo dumps in your mansion you hire security guards to stick up for you because you have zero friends that will and your own girlfriend is out there displaying her stench trench for the entire world to see on OnlyFans. you don't have one single real connection with someone unless they're placed behind a paywall and your one and only sad excuse every single time time you say to make yourself feel better is just to brag about your money. You built your entire defense out of paper then wonder how people penetrate right through it. As much as I dislike Jack, what I hate more is how accessible my personal information is on the internet. Take this screenshot from one of my relatives who has all of his private information including home addresses and phone numbers just one google search away from being uncovered. I'm sure if he knew this was all out there he probably wouldn't be able to trust anyone with his info. And honestly seeing how much is out there about him makes me question how much of my own info is online brokers sell your information to spammers, scammers, and anyone else that may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura, the today's sponsor of this video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps with the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive records. I don't know if you saw this, but AT&T revealed that over 73 3 million customer records, both existing and former customers, were released on the dark web. That's like a quarter of our country's personal info out there right at people's fingertips. Your name, address, email, social security number, your birthday, well maybe even the time of birth might be out there too. AT&T suggested to have stronger passwords to monitor your account more and consider more fraud alerts. Thankfully, Aura does all of this, and best of all, I don't have to download several different apps just because a company couldn't keep my data secure. Best of all, it's also a lot cheaper. Look at those prices. Almost laughable compared to other brands. If my info was compromised in the AT&T data breach, I wouldn't worry because Aura is always on, always doing the hard work of keeping me safe. I value my privacy and I value yours. You can go to Aura.com slash Briz to start your two-week free trial. It's also linked below in the description. Now let's get back to the video. So now that we went over what exactly Jack is being accused of, let's go back to the messenger that spoke out in the first place, that being our brittle Indian chicken little Neon. Another kick streamer who has about as much of a bad reputation, if 
if not worse than Jack himself. But ultimately, he would be the one to bring all this info into the spotlight. However, this is the same guy that has faked his own death twice now, making it very difficult to even trust one thing that leaves his crusty crawfish ass lips. Because this guy can't be caught telling the truth, even if his life depended on it. The two had a little back and forth with each other before it kind of fell dead in the water, up until around a couple weeks ago, where the beef escalated when Neon decided to bring up the OnlyFans accusations once again on his live stream. Drunk underage girls on yachts and taking percentages of them. You will be going down, my brother. You will be going down. I never had any real problem with you until now, so you will be going down. Underage girls on a yacht making them drink. I know everything about you, and I'm, I got this. I got this. He sounds like Kermit the Frog with bronchitis. <laughs> real quick, want to give a huge shout out to More Pegasus for the clips. Jack would respond to this with the signature no you type of response he typically does, this time showing a screenshot of a conversation they had about Neon apologizing for the first time he said it, which was a few months back when he was once again live streaming. Jack, you, bro. I was actually speaking highly of you for the first time. You want to come here and talk? It's all good, bro. It's all good. It's all good. I just don't give a f anymore, man. I, I, I just don't care, bro. You get 17 year old girls. The night before their birthday, you got you buy a ten thousand dollar yacht every time. You get them drunk and they sign a contract. Fifty percent of their life every single time. So apparently, Neon made this all be a magical little fairy tale he made up when he was drunk. So the text convo starts off with Jack reacting to Neon's clip by saying, "Yo, you're crazy for this, and it ain't even true. I do nothing but stick up for you, and you say some crazy false stuff like this." Neon immediately took a deep breath and started sucking Jack's little beanstalk by saying, "My bad. I'll clear it up next stream." That whole stream, I was fully blacked out drunk, saying dumb stuff. I literally got banned for some stupid stuff. I said, I see you defend me every time. I'll show the same respect back. That's on me. Appreciate it, bro. Like always, Neon's apology was like a queef in a windstorm. It meant absolutely nothing because he's done this exact same thing twice now like he has done with everything else. Jack would make one more response towards what I would say a brick fucking wall, completely ignoring the original allegations against him by saying, all the girls I have signed are older than me, so this makes no sense. What underage girls have I signed? Underage girls can't even sign a contract. Bro sounds so dumb, bro should back up what he says with proof. Just a giant nothing burger towards addressing what the actual accusation was, which was you turning into a quagmire on these bitches, getting to know them and inviting them to parties while they are underage, only to manipulate them and then get them drunk to join OnlyFans the moment they're 18. Nice attempt on the wordplay though, you really tried hard to ignore the fact that you hang out with them long before they're legal. I don't understand what kind of freaky Friday shit happened because I swear Jack is only 20 years old but shares the same mindset of a 40 year old perverted high school janitor. The two would eventually catch each other at an event, resulting in them having some sort of degenerate duel over who's the biggest asshole out of the two. All of this started was Neon and Jack attending the same fight event where they would end up getting in a fight themselves for around three seconds before both security teams from each side started piling into each other. It pretty much went from a one-on-one -on -one to the front door of a Walmart during Black Friday in the matter of a blink of an eye. I mean, it's like I'm looking at a wave pool from Six Flags, just bodies swimming all over each other. Now, since YouTube takes all of their inspiration from the North Korean regime towards updating their guidelines, I unfortunately can't show any contact being made. But by the looks of it, Jack is the one that got folded here, having his ass and legs up, almost in a missionary position, leaking through his panties, begging to be <laughs> fucked. So since Jack has quite literally gone into submission, I'm gonna have to give the win to Neon. It's honestly hard to even give a win out to anyone here, because both of them fight like terminally ill Make-A-Wish patients. I'm glad to see nothing change here though. One of the many reasons people clown on these two is the fact that they always have to start fights, then run and hide behind their security guards as they finish them for them. And it seems like they're still following the same standards today, which is just baffling to me. I feel like if you're going to base your entire personality on being the tough guy, the least you can do is actually know how to fight without having to run away to sip your apple juice and change your tampon after you take your first swing. You're a camera man! Pick up the camera! Pick up the camera! Pick up the camera!
Every time Neon gets emotional, it starts yelling, it always sounds like a pelican if it swallowed a pack of Newport cigarettes. It's like listening to shrimp scream from Smiling Friends. I do gotta give my props, this is the first time I've ever seen Jack pressing somebody that also had an entire allegiance of autism behind him too. It essentially just became a giant game of human chess where Jack and Neon would just keep setting pawns to fight in the front line. Jack would end up directly responding to the clip I just showed in his own tweet that says, Bro's nothing without his security, and I dropped his security anyway. This is coming from the guy that got into a lawsuit over his bipolar security guard, Detroit smashing a man in the face because he was defending himself from a problem Jack started. I refuse to believe somebody can be this self-oblivious. His brain has to be harder than his skull to generally believe he isn't as much, if not more of a bitch than Neon is when it comes to altercations. Luckily, our battle of the century doesn't end there. After Jack and his team completely evacuated the building, they instantly started blueprinting their get back. You know, Jack isn't standing down for that. He's not a pussy, just a gaping open vagina. And when Neon and his crew were leaving the arena, Jack decided to sneak up on Neon like a Scooby-Doo villain and sucker punched him right on the side of the head before stumbling to the floor and having all hell break loose with security. It's almost adorable seeing how his security guard cradles him like an infant tugging his shirt and everything. We know Jack's father abandoned hope on him, but this guy is the real dad that stepped up, was waiting for him to smack Jack on the wrist and put a binky in his damn mouth. Somehow, despite having almost every advantage you can possibly think of, Jack ended up being the one laid out on the floor once again, without even being able to connect one solid swing. And you want to talk about how Neon is the one who's nothing without security, when you had the biggest chance imaginable to rock him to the floor, you couldn't have even made him move an inch because your punch was that weak. So far, Neon is really up by two on this whole showdown because he was able to be the one to land a good hit on Jack. This ends the battle between the two, but I'm sure it doesn't end the upcoming war because this just seems like another drama they are either going to drag out because of genuine hatred or for content. It's either one of the two and I'll be there to report it because I like views as well. The scandals with Jack doesn't only end there though because his security team will get into another violent altercation with this time an actual child. Somebody right out of 8th grade, his main demographic, decided to go against him and started getting up in his face, calling him the trash that he is before his guards would decide to stone cold stun this motherfucker into the marble floor. Just threw that kid in the sky like he was a part of Team Rocket. Now, I understand if Jack did something himself here because, to be fair, the kid did start getting into his face, touching him first, I believe. I get if you tried pushing him off or trying to walk away from an obvious lawsuit, but your guard decided to take the case for you, grand slamming that hoe into a different dimension. Wouldn't be surprised if that's the second lawsuit Jack is gonna have to deal with now because he's already been hit with one that was directly caused by his security guard throwing a tantrum very similar to this one. I think Jack even knew that too, which is why he was pleading for everyone not to make contact with. Them. Honestly, I think that's going to wrap the video up there. I say at the end of every video that he is nothing but a downward spiral, and I seem to be right every single time. Being very close to the same age as him, I pretty much gave up all hope on seeing him spark some sort of redemption arc where he tries to turn everything around. But I guess he has some sort of humiliation kink towards being the most hated person on the internet. One of these days, he's going to quickly learn that he's not as invincible as he thinks, and as much as I dislike him, I hope he realizes that before something terrible happens. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed another video poking fun of this humanized yeast infection make sure to slap a like on this vid before your dad slaps you subscribe to hit my vibe i posted on my instagram recently so make sure to run that up as well and follow me on there if you haven't already with that being said i hope you all enjoyed and i will see you all next week all right i'm gonna head out this bitch.